Hi, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another React and Firebase authentication tutorial. In today's video, I'll be going over Firebase phone authentication in React. I'll put out a similar video on how to do this either on iOS or Android with React Native Firebase. Now let's take a look at the React application that I've set up here. So I've got a basic bootstrap form that accepts a phone number. And once I enter my phone number, there's a button here that expands uh, the form to uh, request the OTP from the user. And then going into my VS Code, I haven't implemented the Firebase code yet, so it's only the form for now. So uh, when the user submits the form, uh, we have this request OTP function that's set up. At the moment, it's only set to expand the form, so I'm using a state to uh, get the expansion uh, state of the form. So once the uh, expansion is, is true, then we display the uh, OTP input. Now, before we go ahead and implement our function, let's first go over the steps that we'll need to take to actually implement phone authentication. I'll go ahead and reload this page here. So before we can implement phone authentication, uh, the first thing we need to do is set up our Firebase project, obviously, and add phone authentication. So before I go over that, let's come to this section here, which is step two, which is uh, recapture verifier. So this is like a required step before we can implement any phone authentication. So it's a security requirement by Google that we have a recapture form uh, that the user fills out before they can uh, send out the OTP to the mobile device. And the recapture can either be the invisible recapture or the normal recapture where you have to select a few blocks. So let's first set up our Firebase project. We'll go ahead and create a new project. We'll call this one uh, phone auth. Uh, no need for Google Analytics. We'll go ahead and create our project. In the meantime, I'll install Firebase in my React project. Then I'll follow the steps on how to set up my config file from the documentation. So in my source folder, I'll create a new file, call it Firebase config. And then in here, I'll just copy all of this. And then for my config information, I'll head back to my console. Set up a web application. I'll just call it web app and register your application. And then copy the config info here. And I'll just paste it in there. Oops. continue to console. Then I can close this and then here, uh, just under authentication, web authentication, I'll just click get started to follow the steps on how to set up authentication. So we'll need to import get auth from Firebase forward slash auth. And we can remove the create uh, user with email and password. Then here, just create a new variable uh, that I'll export and I'll call it authentication. And here I'll then call get auth and pass along this app variable here. And then in my app.js, I'll go ahead and import authentication from my Firebase config. And then let's just go ahead and enable uh, authentication in our application here. So we can go ahead and close that tab there. And then we'll just be setting up phone authentication and save. Cool. And then from here, so as I mentioned before we begin, we need to first call the recapture verifier. 
So to do this, uh, we'll need to import recapture verifier from Firebase Auth, and this will be in our app.js file here, or whatever file you're working on to implement this in. So save. So here, once we expand the form, what we need to do is have this method here. So uh, let me first copy this and then I'll explain afterwards. We can remove this on submit. So what's happening here, we're creating a variable, a global variable in our application with this window.recapture verifier. And this variable is basically the recapture form that's being generated. So this is a global variable cause we'll be using this in other functions in this application. So just to illustrate this, uh, let me make an example here. So if I go in my console here, I can create a global variable by simply calling window dot, and then this will be the variable name. So test, and then will be equal to, let's say, testing variable. And then anywhere in my application, I can then just call window.test, which will be referencing that variable we just created. So in the same way here, we first generate the recapture form using this new recapture verifier that the user will have to fill in if it's a visible recapture. If it's an invisible recapture, it will be just pop up on our screen and just do the verification in the background. And then the variable that will be referencing this later will be this recapture verifier. So from here, uh, this sign in button, uh, this is the ID of the uh, div where we're supposed to uh, render the recapture form. So here I've already set up a div with this is where we'll be rendering our recapture. So I'll just replace sign in button with that. And then this next parameter is basically an object. And here we specify whether our recapture should be visible or invisible. And I will take you through both uh, uh, solutions or scenarios in a bit. And then the third very, uh, parameter is the authentication that we just created in our Firebase config. So I'll copy that and paste it in there. So I'll just move this into its own method. I'll call it generate recapture. So I'll just copy that and paste it in there. So this will be our generate recapture method and everything should be fine there. So once the form is expanded, I'll generate my recapture. Once that has been generated, then I'll sign in the user using the phone number that they've submitted here. And to do that, we'll just need to scroll down and import sign in with a phone number. So once we generate the recapture, we'll then sign in with phone number. Then we'll first pass along, let's just check here. So the first parameter is the authentication. And then the phone number. And then from here, uh, the third parameter that we need to pass is the app verifier. So now we have our uh, recapture being generated in this separate function. So to call this uh, or reference this variable, as I mentioned, we can simply create a new variable here. We'll call it app verifier and we can get this new recapture that is being generated by simply calling window.recapture verifier and then we'll pass that along as the third parameter and then what this should do this sign in with phone number will basically return a confirmation result and it will also send the uh, one-time pin to the user and then we'll also catch any errors that we get. And for now, we'll just console log these. And 
then for our confirmation result, this will also use in a separate method. So we'll also uh, create a global variable for this. We'll call it window dot uh, confirmation result. Once the user clicks the button, uh, we expand the form and then we generate our recapture. Once we generate our recapture, then we pass the, uh, I mean, we send the OTP out to the user. Now, once the user starts typing in the OTP, that's when I'll actually confirm the uh, number that they've uh, submitted. And then from here, let's first uh, see what we get. And I'll also just record my screen to show you the OTP messages that I get. Oops, uh, let's move our Firebase in there. Go. Now I can enter my mobile number here and then request OTP. Then you can see the recapture has been generated there and I should be receiving the OTP in a moment. So let me just go into, and there we go. So it's 596530. So now we need to confirm this OTP. So we need to create a method to uh, confirm the OTP next. Let me go ahead and do that and I'll confirm it by listing for any changes in this uh, input form or this OTP input. So what I'll do here, let me first create a new variable. I'll call it verify OTP. Okay, and then in this OTP input, let me create a state first. So I'll assign a value here, which will be OTP. And then we'll also add a on change event to our OTP input. And then for that, we'll simply call verify OTP. So let's get the value of our input. and then set OTP, and then we'll just check for the length of our OTP. So if OTP.length uh, is equal to six, so the digit that's being sent to us is a six, uh, six digit code. So we'll check if the length is six, and then only then will we verify. Let's console log the OTP that the user sends for now. Let's try this again. Request OTP. And then I'll type that in five nine six five three zero. So only once I've typed in the full OTP, then will I do the verification. And then to verify our OTP, we'll just call uh, this global variable that we. Uh, set here because we need the confirmation result to verify our OTP. So I'll just remove that. And then to verify, let me create a variable. We'll call it confirmation result. And then we'll get our confirmation result by simply calling window.confirmation result. And then from here, we can simply scroll down and copy, where is it? 
uh, this section here. And then we'll replace code with OTP. And then we should have our user being created after that. Okay, and then now let's see if we can complete the registration process. And so if you remove this uh, invisible here, it will bring up the normal, uh, what do you call, recapture where we'd have to select something. So it will bring up this one here. And we'll keep the invisible recapture for now. Let me just reload this. So let's uh, do our request and create the user. So request OTP, the recapture, and then I need to select my crosswalks. And then I'll just wait for my OTP to be sent. So five, nine, six, five, three, zero. Then it should be verifying. Uh, we don't have any uh, messages or console logs to verify, but it should have created the user in our authentication here. So let me just reload this. Then there we go. So we have the user. So we should just have a console log here to actually console log the user out and then could have populated that here. But ideally, that's how you'd go about uh, implementing this. I'll share this code as well on my uh, Buy Me Coffee page. So if you need the code, you can just uh, uh, hop in there and download from there. Cheers for now.